Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day on this Friday. And I, and I would say happy Friday, uh, but the subject matter I have uh, to share with you about in, in uh, Mark 14 today isn't necessarily the, the kind that, that leaves you all bubbly and feeling good. Listen to this passage uh, right at the beginning of Mark 14. It was now two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. Um, they're plotting to kill Jesus. And, and this is right before they make the deal with Judas for him to betray. And, and they're trying to figure out a way to uh, take the life of God's one and only son. Now, we know that that was God's plan. That was the intention of Jesus. He knew it was coming. He was prepared to offer himself up as that sacrifice for our sins. But uh, from this passage, um, we know that evil people do evil things. And it shouldn't surprise us because Scripture tells us that all of us, including me and you, are evil. Right? Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul says, None is righteous, not even one. Not one of us is righteous. Uh, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So um, evil is real and people choose to do evil. And when I say people, I mean me and you. I know I choose to do evil uh, intentionally. Now I fight those urges and stuff like that, but I still do evil. You choose to do evil when, when you do things when you, you blame it on, I lost my temper, but you gave it away. You didn't lose it. You knew right where it was. Uh, but see, it, it, acknowledging the fact that we're evil and we do evil is okay because that's why Jesus came into this world to suffer and die for our sins, for our evil, so that we could be saved, so that we could have eternal life, so that we could be adopted as sons and daughters of the living God and be redeemed. And, and that's why, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 said, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin, to become evil for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. There was a great exchange that took place in Jesus' death. So, um, so evil is real. People do evil things. And by the way, the evildoer may appear to win, but he doesn't win. The evildoer may appear to have the upper hand, but I want you to understand evil always loses. Always. The writer of Hebrews says, it is appointed unto man once to die and then to face judgment. They're going to give an account of their life to God. And if they've lived a life dedicated to evil, well, they're going to reap what they've sown. Uh, the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy said that some men's sins precede them to judgment and others follow after. In other words, sometimes it's going to be exposed before judgment. We're going to see the evil that they've done, and they're going to be held accountable in this life. Uh, but if they're not held accountable in this life, they'll be held accountable. Nothing is going to get past God. Not one thing. So everyone is going to account for their lives. And, and by the way, our only hope, their only hope of salvation is the grace of God in Jesus Christ. That's it. Our only hope is in Jesus. And, and that's why we, ought, of all people, ought to be the most grateful, the most joyful, because we've experienced that forgiveness of sin. Our, our evil has been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And that's why we want to tell other people about Jesus, because he'll pay for their evil too. Um, so Jesus is the one true judge. And when we come to him having experienced his grace, it's a beautiful thing. So today, uh, I would love for you to get honest with God and confess your evil. Just go ahead and admit it. Admit the, the thoughts you're having. Admit the desires that are deep inside of you. Just be honest about it. Because if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and will forgive our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. So confess your, your evil and then repent of those evil desires. You know, build some you know, new habits in your life that will protect you from those places of temptation. And then follow Jesus. Follow Jesus actively so you're not influenced by evil people. By, by the way, that's one of the reasons that we want all of you to be in life groups. Because when you're in a life group with other people who love Jesus and are trying to follow Jesus, it helps you follow Jesus. That, that's the reality. The writer of Proverbs says, the one who walks with the wise 
becomes wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. Uh, so, you know, actively follow Jesus. Be in worship. Be involved in serving. And be involved in a life group so other people can cheer you on and help you to live the life you want to live and overcome the evil that's inside of you. The evil that actually led people to plot to destroy the Son of God and Savior of the world. Of course, their evil minds couldn't conceive how God could redeem that, and neither can we. But God will redeem everything if we'll follow him. I hope that encourages you today, uh, and uh, I'm praying that you win over your evil that's inside of you, and I'd hope that you would pray that I would win over the evil that's inside of me. God bless Calvary.